2019 has proven to be an amazing year for AMD. The company have launched the Zen 2 processor architecture, along with, of course, the myriad of different CPUs which utilize it, and also the Nave-based architecture has made its debut as well in graphics. If you own the Radeon RX 5700 or 5700 XT, you will know that these cards perform extremely well right out of the box. But did you know with a bit of tweaking and know-how, you can get much more performance out of these GPUs. My name's Paul, and in this RedGamingTech.com video, I'm going to be showing you just how to do that, and we're going to be using AMD's reference design RX 5700. They have sent me this for the purposes of review, along with uh, a few other things that will be coming up on the channel, so do make sure that you subscribe if you want that content. A quick note though before we start, and that is that I'm not accepting any responsibility for any damage that may occur to either your PC or your graphics card. What we're doing here is not particularly complicated and there is no hardware mods involved. Instead, we're using a registry tweak to enable you to set higher clock frequencies, power limits, vCore, and so on and so on for the graphics card. But that doesn't mean that you should be irresponsible with the settings and you still will want to uh, keep an eye on things such as temperatures. So basically what I'm telling you is that if you go ahead and put like 10 gigahertz for the core clock and put in like, you know, 5,000 volts into the, into the GPU core and it explodes, that's on you. So do be careful. Uh, make sure to monitor temperatures correctly. Make sure to uh, increase and increment the clock frequencies gradually. I would advise that you start with the GPU core, find out what's stable and what's best for temperatures, and then start to modify the memory clocks. But with that said, let's get into the video. So what are we trying to achieve with our tweaking? Well, if you look at the specification difference between the RX 5700 and the RX 5700 XT, they are quite similar to one another. Both have identical memory configurations, for example. The difference is that the XT features 40 compute units, whereas the vanilla 5700 features 36 compute units, meaning there's 256 shaders difference, and also lower clock frequencies. So the soft mod we're using does not enable these missing stream processors of the 5700. Instead, the goals here are to push the 5700 clock frequencies up closer or even surpassing the 5700 XT. And if you own a 5700 XT, then by golly gosh, you just want to crank the performance up as much as possible. You will need to download several things before we proceed. You can find them linked in the description of this video and also in the article. So the first thing you'll want to download is the latest AMD Radeon drivers for your graphics card. You will also want to download Display Driver Uninstaller. You will want to download the PPT Registry mods from Igor's lab as he's the one who actually came up with this method, so full credit to him. And the final thing, although this one is optional, I'll explain more about this one in a moment, the more power tool. I'd suggest you download it, but uh, you won't need it until close to the end of this guide. So at this point, I suggest that you put all of the files that you've downloaded onto a f into a folder, excuse me, on your desktop. Let's just say for the sake of argument, OCing Nave. And then you would want to extract them but don't run anything, but you just want to install Display Driver Uninstaller. After you've done all of that, you will want to click on Start and type Registry and then load up Windows Registry. And then navigate to the path that is on screen. I'll also put it in the description of this video. I want to emphasize, you want to make certain this path is exact. There are lots of subfolders which are named similarly to this one, so you just want to make sure that you go to this exact path. When you do, you will see multiple subfolders, potentially, that are named something like 0000, 0001, and so on. Now, with any luck, the RX 5700 will reside as an entry in the 0000 folder. You can simply click on it and you can see references to AMD inside of it. So if you only have one subfolder, 
that has four numbers, then that would be the RX 5700 slash 5700 XT. So if you've just built your system or you've just done a fresh install of Windows, then there's a good chance that this is going to be the situation. If, on the other hand, you've upgraded your graphics card, let's say from a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 970, or the first thing you did was install, say, Intel's iGPU drivers, and then you installed the RX 5700, there's a very good chance that 0000 is not going to be the uh, AMD entry and will be something else. If that's the case, you've got two choices. So if it is the case, you can skip this step. If it isn't the case, and 0000 is, let's say, an iGPU from Intel, then you're going to have to do a couple of extra steps. The good news is it's not very difficult. I'm going to present to you two options. If you are a complete beginner, option one is probably easiest, uh, but you can also go for option two, and option two is also helpful for those who find that option one didn't quite work for them. So you will want to run Display Driver Uninstaller and then go through all of the different cards that has been on your system. So for example, you had a GTX 970 and you also have an Intel iGPU driver installed, then uninstall everything from NVIDIA, uninstall everything from Intel, and then finally do the same thing for AMD. Yes, you do want to uninstall the AMD driver because currently it's, well, just located in the wrong folder on registry. Let's just put it that way. So once you've done that, you will want to restart your system. You should also disconnect the internet ideally so that it doesn't do something like install Intel's iGPU drivers first, which is something that sometimes Windows can do just to be super annoying. So if that's the case uh, and you've done that, you can uh, go back into uh, Windows and then install the Radeon RX 5700 or Radeon RX 5700 XT drivers restart again and then go back to Windows registry and with any luck your card is now 0000 and it will be the only entry. It doesn't actually matter if it's the only entry as long as it's 0000. Okay the other option it's a little trickier but not that much trickier is to look at the folder that the AMD drivers are located in. So let's say in my case, they were located in 0001. What you can do with this mod is to actually tweak the registry file before you run it so that it places it in the relevant directory. The easiest way to achieve this is to open up Notepad and then simply drag and drop the relevant registry file into notepad and then you can edit it. You will want to edit the top line, you can see it on screen now, to whatever number the AMD drivers are located in in your registry. So in my case I change it from 0000 to 0001. Uh, as for which file you will want to choose, well let's talk about that. So now that you've extracted the uh, registry entries into the folder, you can choose which one you would like to install. Personally, I would advocate that you just use the more power registry patch and the even more power and so on you just leave alone. Now, if you are an advanced overclocker and you have a water cooling loop, for example, on the GPU and you are happy to take the risks, then that's on you. But I'm going to make uh, this video with the average person in mind that you have like a stock cooler or something like that on the GPU and therefore I would highly advise that you just use the uh, more power uh, registry tweak. Next is the hard part, not really. All you have to do is save it and then double click on whatever registry file you want to install uh, and then it's going to ask you, are you super duper certain that you want to merge this? Then you choose yes, and then you can restart your system. You can also restart the display driver as well, but I'm just going to say restart Windows. Once you're back into Windows, you can uh, go to AMD's control panel, go to Watman, and then you should be able to crank the power limit up to 50% higher now. Previously, it was limited to just 20%, and you can also select higher clock frequencies for both the core clocks as well as the memory. For the basics of overclocking the RDNA-based cards, what you will want to do 
is start out with just the GPU core and then slowly increment the clock frequency. Let's say 25 to 50 megahertz at most. I would suggest 25 megahertz. Slowly increase it using runs of something like superposition. Uh, superposition uh, finishing a run doesn't necessarily mean it's stable for long periods of time, but it gives you an idea of what's going on with temperatures at the very least. So find out where you start noticing that you are having issues or crashing or instability, and then you can potentially increase the amount of voltage going to the core, although that doesn't necessarily uh, increase the performance or the clock frequency because additional voltage does also add more heat. Basically, you will want to find the best combination of uh, voltage, clock frequency, and heat. And then when you've got something that feels pretty stable, you will want to start tweaking the memory clock speeds as well. Most likely, you can probably get between 1900 megahertz and 2 gigahertz on the core. And as for the memory, 930 to maybe 950 uh, for the memory. But obviously those figures are going to be highly dependent upon lots of different factors. And now you can either be happy and stop right there, or you can go a little bit further and install the more power tool. So the reason we did this last, well there's two reasons. The first is that without installing the registry mod first, you can't actually tweak anything. All of the more power tool is simply greyed out and you can't do anything. Furthermore, if you are not an advanced user or are not using a more exotic form, uh, form of cooling, I would probably not go ahead and install this and mess around with it um, because it allows you to crank and adjust limits even further. So, for example, you could set the power limit to just 40% or you could increase it to 60% or do the same thing for clock frequencies. You can also use this tool to install BIOSes from uh, non-reference cards. So, for example, you could use the BIOS of an RX 5700 XT 50th anniversary in your regular uh, plain old reference design RX 5700 XT. With any luck, you found this video informative, and if you did, then drop a like on the video, and you can also, of course, subscribe to the channel for much more upcoming content. I'll also take a moment to remind you that the written version of this article is linked in the video description, along with any files that you will require to perform these soft mods. And that's just about it for this video, so thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.